welcome to the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Today is July the 22nd, 2019, and we have a watch list for you today. Miss Vegas. Okay, so we're going to talk about TRNX BYND LCI SHMP, which is an OTC stock, and also TTCM, which is just a follow up from yesterday's uh, comments in the video. So let's begin. Let's talk about our friends at TRNX, uh, Taronis Technologies. Well, 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 what did that, what happened there? Well, we saw this morning that Taronis Technologies did jump 70% today. Uh, they're looking to ink a potential $165 million deal. Let me tell you that if they were to ink something like that, this is worth more than the actual company. So, uh, you know what, this stock, as you know, has fallen 90% over the last 12 months. Um, but you know what, the looks like to me, this to me looks like a very strong buy um, because of what's coming down the pipeline here. Um, you know, the, the contract that they got here, if you actually take a look, I'm just going to see here the details of their, uh, their contract here on uh, 165 million dollars uh and again it says they're gonna to ink could ink okay so these are like you know key words um so they did announce that it, they've entered into a new and large contract so the contract deals were basically that they're they're gonna start with an initial purchase basically of 15 units over the course of 18 months and the contract includes the option to purchase an additional 15 units over 18 months. And these, the, what I'm talking about, these units I'm talking about, they're gasification units. And this is a purchase on behalf of Chironis uh, Fuels, okay? So I'm just going to have to hang up on this call because I can't take the call right now. Um, so they're going to be received. Here's what's going to happen. Chironis um, is going to get an upfront payment of $3.75 million dollars for each gasification unit that's purchased. And then following the purchase, they will get an additional 1.75 uh, paid per unit under a 10 year maintenance contract. And they're also gonna get a 3% royalty on all the gas that's produced. So what we're saying here, the reason they said up to $165 million contract, because it is dependent on them buying 30 units because if they were to buy 30 units um with this client they will be spending 165 million dollars and they'll be getting royalties as well so um obviously the company said that in order to meet the demand in turkey apparently 75 gasification units would be needed so what's going to happen is this further purchase agreements are going to be needed down the line so at this time just so you know, we don't know the name of the company. People ask me today, what's the name? What's the name? We don't know. And Taronis is not disclosing it. Um, all we know is that it is a Turkish organization that has partnered with five of the largest industrial gas distributors in Turkey. And two of these, two of these companies are global competitors in the industrial gas. So um, there you go. So that's kind of like the scoop in a nutshell. So longer term, I think the stock would be worth a lot more um, than what we're seeing at this time. But Jim, let's hear about the chart and what you're seeing. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to pull up the chart right now. Right out of the gate this morning, we were watching the thing break out. And Vegas popped right on it. She got in the trade right around 50, 51 cents. And then I followed it up with a target of 70 cents. I said, we're going to hit 70 cents for sure right before it even got there it was right around 50 at the time 49 50 cents well that proceeded a 20-day high which we had right here at 51.58 so that was a good little entry spot for it i'm going to pull up the daily and you can see right here with the great run it respected that nine ema all the way up and then once that nine started curling down and crossed over that 34 it was time to go ahead and exit this trade if you did not exit the trade at 70 cents I sold some on the way up and, kept, and held just a thousand shares for whenever. And then later on today, I was able to get back out of it with a profit of that extra thousand dollar shares that I had. 
but it did pull back to a support level that I had right here at 60 cents. That was one of my resistance levels that I thought if it pulled back below that, I'd probably go ahead and get out of it, and I did. And then she went ahead and bounced on up past that and dipped on down to 56.29 and bounced up to a resistance level right here, right around the 65 cents. And then disrespected again that nine, disrespected that 34, and it just kept going on down until the end of the day or until the beginning of the day. And then I'm going to pull this up here the whole day. I will show you what happened. So she, once she bit down to that 49.50 area, it red head and re, we chased back up and went back to 63 cents and then pulled back and consolidated most of the rest of the day. Right now, after hours, we're at 54.50. So I've got a couple supports on this trade. It's going to be right here between the 47 and 49 area. And then if it break, if it ho doesn't hold that, it could probably dip down to these other three support levels that I have down here. Now, if it decides to break up and move up. We need to break a resistance of 60 cents and create a double top up here right around 70, 72. That would be my hard resistance level that I would consider this trade. But we always got to realize how are they going to respect the moving averages. And right now, the moving averages are in a positive bullish pattern right now with the 9 on top, the 34, and the 200. If they dip down below that 200, we're going to get into a bearish pattern. So then you want to look for those lower supports. And that's going to be TRNX, and that was a pretty good trade pre-market. Kind of faded out the rest of the day, though. We did have a, a, a rebound bounce. And there, usually those rebound bounces are about 50% less than what the high was. And you can see what I'm saying. When it pulled back to that 49, it just bounced up to 60 to 63. So every higher, every new high was a lower high is what I'm trying to say so that's TRNX the next one we're going to talk about it's going to be a real nice option play today plus it was a nice uh, scalper today even BYND well you know we didn't really we had a good option opportunity but I got to tell you we did miss the opportunity to really trade this properly um, we're just you know so busy with these other ones here that totally missed you know beyond meats in terms of trading the option um, there was a really good opportunity to trade that. Uh, we see that the stock has popped to near highs. And, uh, you know, the stock went as high as 199.44. Just, you know, back on in June 18, this had a record high of 201.88. And, uh, you know, that's kind of, you know, the number that we're going to be looking for on uh, Beyond Meat. But, you know, there's a lot of big changes that's happening at uh, Beyond Meat and um, I will tell you this I have never seen an IPO stock that's moved this fast this much so soon and you know what <laughs> I'm never gonna live this down for my dad because he kept telling me did you buy Beyond Meat and I'm like no and I you know I told you guys that I told him you know these IPOs sometimes there's no follow-through or they pop and then they pull back. Well, you know what? I have yet to see what's happening with Beyond Meat. Uh, it is one of the top gainers in the market. Um, you know, does this stock have growth? Um, they have active trading volume, also tons of contracts. Um, you know, it's just incredible. They have a 56.17 million float. Um, it's definitely something to definitely keep an eye on. Um, the stock had previously traded around 170.77 and 178.55. So, you know, I think the shorts are running away from Beyond Meat. Um, I think the, the you know, we'll, we'll see a drop in the short interest and in bind shares. But, hey, anything can happen. Remember, they had, um, they added Beyond Meat to the, um, it's not going to save Blue Apron is what I, I think. Um, I, the fact that Apron added Beyond Meats to their menu, that's great, but I don't think it's going to save them. But uh, you know what, Jim? I want to hear about what you think about Beyond Meats because they do have earnings next week. Um, and uh, I'd like to know your thoughts on that chart. Yeah, we're not, we don't know exactly what to expect out of the earnings because it's going to be the first earnings it's had since it's hit the stock market since the I, 
appeal has been presented. But this was just, or was it on that last earnings when this thing jumped up? Or what made this thing ran? Remember a while back when this thing just took off? Was that because of earnings? Yeah, it was. It was back here on 6-6, uh, six, six, and Vegas got in this trade, and this sucker just kept running up, and it ran all the way up to $150. And it was just unbelievable, this big candle wick that next day. And so this is going to be the second earnings that are going to be coming out on it. We did run up to a high of 201.88, so I kind of called that as a resistance there at 199.94. And I think I had one above that even that we almost hit. But I re went ahead and redone this chart because it was getting pretty ugly with all my little trend lines on it. It even had a little cancer scare and still yet, the thing still is up here at an all time double top high up here around 201.88. And so we're gonna bring this down to the 20 day chart right now and look at it. It does pull back very seldom and when it does it's, you know, it's kind of a decent little pullback. We had a three day pullback right here when we had a high of right around 167.81. It pulled back to 150, a little under 150 to 148. And then for the next week she ran up, we kind of consolidated last week and then today, Monday, she broke out, respected that nine EMA on the 20 day chart and we've had a pullback here to a support level of 194.13. Now I'm gonna bring this up to a five day just see if I missed anything in trend lines. It's kind of hard to say at 188.94 and this one right here at 192.37. Now I'm gonna pull it up to one day. So this is how I see it. I see a low support right down here between the 191.62 to the 192.25 with the first support right here at 193.90. 193.93. After hours, we just had a little spike up to 196.19 with a resistance to break right here at 199.94, back up to that $200 mark. We hit two, 280 cents today. Low support is going to be right down in this chamber right down here between the 184.91 and the 188.19. And there's a little pivot point in there at 186.63. These are a lot of big numbers here. <laughs> Kind of, kind of amazing how the stock ran. It ran, opened up out of the gate this morning from 178.15 and ran all the way up to $200. That's just unbelievable. Actually, it is believable because it happened. So this is BYND. We got a break of resistance of 199.94. And we got a, two support areas, probably one of them right here at 192.37. Anything below that, I'd start getting a little fearful of it. And I always use these three moving averages as support levels when I'm doing the trade or even the VWAP. We have the 200, the 34, and the 9 EMA. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be LCI. Okay, so you know what? I've actually not traded LCI before. And uh, this company here is uh, Lynette Company. And uh, I have to say, you know what? This company here uh Lynette company you know went up today over you know 40 percent there was no news on the company that uh this could account for the move and by the way they actually there was an inquiry with the company like why is your stock moving and they're like we don't know there's we don't have any news is what the company said um but i will say that the float is 27.8 million shares there's over 70 percent of the stock is shorted um so um, I don't really know if the move was tracked is triggered a short squeeze. I mean, although it could trigger, um, it is just one of those stocks that just keeps rallying. I mean, uh, I will say, though, that the shorts definitely got uh, smacked today. Um, it's definitely a, a short squeeze candidate. Um, I actually thought it was a short squeeze. But, you know, when I saw what was going on after, I said, I don't really know if this is a short squeeze. Um, but we did see also on the actual chart, let me just pull it up here. And by the way, I really want to give a shout out to, to my team at the trade exchange, uh, George and his team, uh, they really did a phenomenal job, uh, alerting us on the, um, volume alert. 
and the option calls and the idea that we had on the option calls um, was the 750 strikes for September. And you know, when they gave the alert, um, the calls were around uh, 60 cents and they ran up to over $2. So they ran all the way to 230. So you know what? That was a phenomenal, phenomenal job. Also JD the Ripper, he did a great job alerting this as well. He did a beautiful chart drawing on it. But uh, yeah, no news. So Jim, what's your thoughts on this one? The news that came out on it today was it had the biggest volume gain since November of 2000. So that tells you that this is a low volume stock and it has pulled back, not to a year low, year low was right here at 333 and then it ran all the way up to uh i mean it, it was at 1420 and then had big old knife and, and went down to 333 so this was kind of an unusual trade today and i followed it all day long scalped it a couple times and so we're going to pull this up this is a yearly chart we're going to pull this up to a 20 day as you can tell all the way down here from 20 day low of 550. It ran, started breaking out Friday, little breakout, and then today it just took off. It took off and hit a high of 895 and pulled back to a pennant flag of right around 815 after hours. So I've got these different supports and we'll pull this up on the one day, one minute. I think if we go any lower than the 751, it's going to go ahead and drop a lot lower. If not, if that 751 can hold, we're going to be able to have a little scout play in a channel. And that resistance level is going to start right here at 788 and build on up. It is showing a descending triangle right now, as you see lower highs and a neckline of right at 808. And I took this trade off of 808 this morning or this afternoon and run it up to about 8.38 and decide to go ahead and get out. It did pull back to almost that 8.08 and then ran back up right before close to around 8.57. But after hours, it pulled back and hit that 200 EMA. So this is just going to be one I'm going to have watch on watch tomorrow for the first 15 minutes. And if I don't see anything on it in the first 15 minutes of the day, I'm going to take it off my watch list. And that's going to be LCI. Next one we're going to talk about is shrimp. Right. So this is the natural shrimp company. And, um, you know, this company has, you know, it does have still very good market growth potential on this shrimp. Um, so uh, we should be watching this again uh, because, this, you know, Tommy John uh, did alert it today in our chat and even after shortly after it was up already like almost 10 percent it's a good job tommy john um so the global sodium uh shrimp it is a big industry chain structure um there's also a lot of you know um industry players that are in it uh but again i just don't see like there's no news on this at all uh so i'd like to know you know what are we going to see here coming next on this chart because I will say the volume today on this one here was 8.13 million. You know what? Not huge for it considering it's an OTC stock. Not huge, but you know what? Listen, it's up 55.98% uh, today. So you know what? Uh -huh, that's really good. Um, so Jim, that's not bad for well, one day work. Well, actually this is probably Let's one hear of about our- shrimp. This is probably one of our best trades we've called out together this we year. We love shrimps. We've traded this to the bone. This, I mean, we called we this thing well. out. We called this thing out right around the two cent area, and it ran up all the way to ninety four nine, almost ninety five cents. We were on this every day, and that sucker just run, 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 and then pulled back pretty hard, and we were able to get back in it and scalp again all the way back up to sixty. So yeah, and I kind of took it off my watch list here here in the last month or so and then if I'd have realized where this stock was I would have been in this yes last week the stock actually pulled back to 6.35 cents and I was scalping this thing when it was up here at 18 and to bring it to 20 to 21 so knowing the fact 
it's a little too late now that this stock was down here at 635 it's already run up a hundred percent right now we're at a 20 day high we do have a 20 day high of 127 and we do have a resistance level right here and that's right where it run to at the 1249 area and that's right where we hit so I'm going to look at the minute I'm going to see if I can find any more trend lines in here that are worthy and I see one right there at eight so I'm going to pull this up to a three minute I'm going to see if I can identify anything in here nope pull it up to a one minute this is how I'm going to call this trade low support just under 10 cents at 949 if that hits or I'll play it as long as it respects this 9 EMA I'm going to run it on up to new highs but I think we hit a 20 day resistance and we are kind of setting up as a uh, oh I'd say almost like a, a pennant flag where it could go either way if it drops down I play it off this 200 EMA on the daily one minute or I'll keep it and play it off this 34 it depends on the tape and the volume so low support no lower I don't want to go any lower than this 949 your second support is going to be right here right around 10 cents and that first support is going to be right here right around 11 right, right around 1104 I see that ascending triangle breakout that we had right here at 1102 so 1104 and then she jumped up right into close up to 1205 area so these are going to be your three supports it's going to either be 949 10 cents or 1104 and if we can break up past this 1250 we can run it up a couple more pennies maybe three or four it depends on how the momentum and there's nothing wrong with the stock I don't think at all I just think it had a real sweet pullback and this was a pullback play that caught momentum and then the last one we're going to talk about is going to be an update for what we said on the Sunday report. Yeah, so this is for uh, the company Totachrome, right? TTCM. Right, so TTCM was mentioned yesterday. This is uh, the Totachrome. And you know what? This is a very interesting uh, company because of what they're involved in. I mean, they're connected, like I said, to the blockchain. And uh, I think that this should not be off your watch list for those of you, especially that like to trade these like micro penny plays. Uh, this should be on your list. Like you should have a watch list just called maybe OTC stocks. And this one should be on it. Had a nice move today. Um, we did talk about this in the video yesterday, so I'm not gonna repeat and bore you guys but this had a nice move today up you know 21.94 percent uh so again a nice little move but here's what's important the volume was really good it was 112.32 million which means you know there's interest out there they like it they're buying it um you know so keep a watch on this one on ttcm uh i don't think it's the last we'll be seeing of uh of this um and longer term i'm gonna we're gonna see where this goes because uh, I'm right now bullish on this for now and uh, because of what this company is involved in. Uh, so we'll see what happens, you know, as the weeks go by. I'm going to still monitor this. Uh, and Jim, let's hear about TTCM. It broke out of a pattern of, of a couple weeks back of a resistance level right at 0.009. I'm gonna, actually, 8.9. I'm going to draw a trend line right there. And I have a low support right now at 18.5. And we today we had a nice little gap up play on it. And we're sitting here with wicks on both sides. It's about even on spinning top, more or less is what I call it. And we hit a high of right around 30. I had a resistance that we had to get on a three-year chart at 339. And it did hit 309. And I was quite impressed when I checked it. I did not play this trade. But on the one year, we're still above that nine. We still got a nice spread of the 34 and the 200. I'm gonna pull up the 20 day real fast. And there's something that I noticed on this a little bit ago. That support level is gonna be right here, right around the 18.5 level. I don't wanna see it pull back more than that. Your second support is gonna be, first support, maybe second is gonna be what I need it to hold. It's gonna be this 236. We did break out of that 236 pattern today and run up to a high right around the 309 and that's where i'm going to put that trend line there for a resistance to break 
I'm going to pull this up to one minute daily now. We did have a crossover down over the 200, but we did have the golden cross right here with the, with the 9, the 34, and the crossover the 200. And respected that 9 EMA most of the day touching back to that 34. And then we had some weakness here when that 9 crossed down and hit that 200. So we created a little support area right here, right around the 27.2 area. I'm still a little bullish on this, but what I noticed here on the 20 day, I'm going to pull this 20 day up again, is that the TTM squeeze started turning dark blue at the end of the day right here, which is just a little sign of weakness. You can see the volume spike here in the past week and a half, mostly all green. So we still got a pretty good little spread on this. If it pulls back, I'm going to be watching it on the 20 day to hit that 34 for a support level. And I trade these all different kinds of ways. I might trade it off the BWAP tomorrow. It depends on how this thing how this thing looks. But so low support, no lower than 18.5, or it might break down. Your second support channel is going to be right here around 221 to 237. Your first support got a hold up here at 27, but I won't play it off that first. I'll play it off the moving average of the 34 or in that channel that I spoke of here at the 221237 area. And if that doesn't hold, it'll definitely have to hold down here at 18.5. This is, and also you can add this to your blockchain sector, TTCM. And that continues the five we're going to talk about today. Always remember to, to subscribe and ring that bell for future updates. We also have a Twitter link here. Follow us on Twitter. And we also have another link here that you can follow us on StockTwits. And that's it for me right now. And Miss Vegas, you have anything else you'd like to say, boss? No, I just want to keep it short and sweet. I mean, today I just found that the opportunities to trade so many things was a little bit limited. Um, you know, the markets, you know, were a little bit up and down today in certain sectors. Uh, I was happy to see the semiconductors do better, which was actually very good for Apple. We had really good Apple calls today. Uh, great move on Apple. Um, you know, so there were some, there were opportunities, but I guess not as much as I was hoping to see, but Apple, what a day today, up over $4 and 79 cents a share. So uh, good job there. So on that note, I wish everyone a great night. We'll see you tomorrow. Again, feel free to come by and visit. We have a free trial. Come check us out. If not, follow us on social media. We do try to post in real time. I did. I was posting LCI in real time. So congrats to those of you that follow and were able to bank. Have a great night, everyone. Yeah, and I'm going to bring up one more little chart here, and that's the SPY. We had a real hard sell-off on the SPY Friday. So it put a lot of fear in a lot of, a lot of bears out there, and they thought this thing was going to go down lower. Well, every time I see a spike like this and you can see it from previous patterns it usually bounces back up and we had a, a week high last week up here at 301 on the yearly chart I'm gonna pull up this yearly chart real fast and you can tell that we had a, had a high last week at that 301 13 area and then she kind of consolidated and pulled back and then Friday had that huge sell-off pulling up the five-day chart you can see what I'm talking about. And so this weekend, Saturday, I had a pivot point area that I wanted to hit. And that was right here at the 297.78 to the 298.11. Well, first thing this morning, right out of the gate, it started to bounce up and it hit that little channel. And then pulled back right at the beginning of the opening bell. And then went ahead and ran back up to 298. The market was more or less flat today. We did kind of get a little in the red, but we're, we're about even right now. And I've noticed here in the close that we do have an ascending triangle that we could probably go back to the higher highs. And I'd like to really see by the end of the week to get back here to 300. But always remember, you know, this is a, a risky little trade and it all depends on, on the sediment of what's going on in the world and how it plays out. But I was, proud to say that it did pull up to my pivot point area that I called in this little channel. And to me, that was kind of a bullish sign for maybe we're going to have some higher highs tomorrow. But the low support's going to be right down here, right around 297.08.
to the 297.24. That's what I want to see you hold if it pulls back. And if it breaks out, I want to see it break this 298.42 and run up to these other three little resistance areas and close by the end of the week of 300. And that's going to be the SPY. So we wish everybody a great trading day tomorrow. Miss Vegas was right. Today was kind of a mixed day in the market. I felt that right out this morning. My stomach, my gut kind of telling me that I didn't want to trade too much and, and I didn't push myself. This is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is July the 22nd and we love stocks. Thank you.